Hi everyone, I'm a new Heather Eason, fertility physician and doctor mom, and here to educate on fertility. In this video, we'll be talking about a gestational carrier. What is a gestational carrier? What are indications for a gestational carrier? And what does the process involve? So let's start that discussion now. What is a gestational carrier? That is the process that involves a woman carrying and delivering a pregnancy for another couple. And that other couple is often called the intended parents. So the egg does not come from the gestational carrier. It comes from often the intended parent. So the intended parent, in order to get an egg, has to go through the process of IVF. The eggs are retrieved, and then the sperm from the intended parent also will fertilize the egg in the lab. Then an embryo will result, and that embryo is later transferred into the uterus of the gestational carrier. And so genetically speaking, the gestational carrier is not related to the embryo that was transferred into her uterus. Circumstances where a gestational carrier could be used are if the intended parent female does not have a uterus, sometimes women are born without a uterus or sometimes the uterus has to be removed. Um, for some reason. So that is one circumstance. Another circumstance is if that intended parent mother has complicated medical history that makes it risky for her to carry a pregnancy, risky for her life and also for the baby's life. And so that's another circumstance where it could be used. Another time where it's used is if a couple has had, for example, multiple transfers that are unsuccessful after undergoing the process of IVF or there's some suspicion about the uterus, for example, multiple fibroids, really severe adenobiosis, but some sort of circumstance where there's some suspicion about the uterus and its ability to carry a pregnancy. And then the last circumstance would be if a female partner is not present. So that could be, for example, a single male or in a same-sex male couple. The ideal candidate for a gestational carrier is a healthy woman between the ages of 21 and 45 who has a history of successful, full-term, uncomplicated pregnancies and has a happy and healthy supportive family environment. We wanna make sure she's not had more than five vaginal deliveries or more than two C-sections because those things could introduce more complications. But generally speaking, we just wanna make sure she is a good candidate to carry a healthy pregnancy to full term. The gestational carrier will undergo a complete history and physical exam. And again, we just wanna make sure she is a good candidate to carry a healthy pregnancy to full term. In addition, we will do some screening for infectious diseases. We wanna make sure there's no risk for any sexually transmitted infections. And then also she will be required to undergo a psychological evaluation with a mental health professional where that professional will meet with the gestational carrier and her partner, look for any psychological risk that may be present, look at the relationship that she has with her partner, with her children, with the intended parents, and again, just trying to make sure she's a good candidate to undergo this process. The intended parents will also undergo a history and physical exam, making sure they are healthy to undergo the processes of IVF. Also, we will talk to them about genetic carrier screening prior to undergoing IVF, and also we do infection screening, looking for sexually transmitted infections. It is done with blood tests, with physical exams and questionnaires. And it is required by the FDA that we do FDA screening with blood tests 30 days prior to the egg retrieval and also seven days prior to the sperm collection, just trying to make sure we are minimizing any infection risk to the gestational carrier. And then also the intended parents will be asked to undergo psychological evaluation with a mental health professional, looking at the relationship with the gestational carrier, with the gestational carrier's family, and also discussing what that relationship will be, not just during pregnancy, but after the delivery and what will be disclosed to the child in the future. So it's important that we discuss these topics in advance prior to undergoing the process. And the last consideration when it comes to using a gestational carrier are the legal considerations. And the laws for a gestational carrier can vary state to state, so it's important for the gestational carrier and the intended parents to have their own independent legal representation 
who are both experienced with gestational carrier contracts in the states that both parties live, where the obstetric care is going to take place and where the delivery will take place. That is it for this video. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, I hope you'll give the video a like. Don't forget to subscribe down below. If you have comments or questions, you can leave them for me there also. Thank you again so much for watching and see you in the next video.